Hello everyone, welcome to our WikiHow Design Essentials uh, session today. Um, so glad to see you here. Um, we are having a bit of an experiment today, streaming both on YouTube and LinkedIn for the first time. Um, so just to let you know, we're going to be here for about an hour. And if you have to go, that's fine, because the recording will be available um, in both platforms um, straight after this. Uh, if you have any questions, please just pop them in the comments or chat, uh, and we'll answer. We'll try to answer them all in the hour that we have. Um, that's it for me. I am going to be introducing my colleague, Amber, who is our WeHouse Projects Lead. Hello, Amber. Hello, Mel. Thanks so much. I'm going to add your presentation and yeah, hand over we're to good you. To go. Thanks so much. Okay, so as Mel says, uh, thanks everyone for joining us today. This is um, uh, one of our live events. It's part of our kind of live series that we do. Um, today, we're going to focus on design essentials. So I'm Amber and I'm an architect and I'm also the uh, project designer for WikiHouse. So the company behind WikiHouse is Open Systems Lab. We're essentially a group of designers, researchers, developers all working together. We kind of have this shared ambition to the best we can redefine the built environment. Um, I really encourage people to head over to the Open Systems Lab website and have a look at some of the really exciting projects we have in development there. So today we're focusing on WikiHouse. Uh, let's get started. So in case you're not familiar with what WikiHouse is, let's uh, let's have a quick look. So WikiHouse is modular. It's a timber-based structural framing system. The digital design files can be downloaded from our online library and then locally manufactured using OSB3 or plywood sheet material. And, uh, and that's kind of cut using CNC uh, digital manufacture. WikiHouse is therefore super accurate and consistent designed in a way that's really simple to assemble using all timber connections. It achieves a fantastic thermal performance. It uh, stores more carbon than uh, is emitted from manufacturing and construction. It can be disassembled, reused, recycled, and it's fully accessible to anyone anywhere in the world. The latest system is called Skylark. The blocks are designed as cassettes. They're 600 wide main modules and we fill those with insulation. Our mission is to put tools and solutions into the hands of every family, community, organisation, enterprise, trying to give them essentially what they need to build beautiful, affordable and zero carbon buildings. The blocks, thankfully, are light to handle, can be assembled by individuals with no prior uh, construction expertise or particular skill set. And thanks to the open source nature, we're able to connect you to whoever is your nearest manufacturer, which supports local providers, limits unnecessary travel uh, of construction materials. The parts are cut to minute levels of detail, 0.1 millimeters of precision. And on average, we estimate one CNC machine can cut the blocks for a small house in two to three weeks. So here we can kind of just see the sequencing, I suppose, from uh, timber all the way through to your structural assembly. WikiHouse has been around for a little while now and it's grown into an incredible global movement. There's a community of designers, architects, engineers and makers all around the world using the system to create sustainable, affordable and customizable spaces and we really hope today that we can kind of bring you into the WikiHouse world and hopefully expand that network and increase the number of projects worldwide. So, of course, the zero carbon element, the sustainability kind of targets that we're all working towards right now is a really enormous conversation. I would encourage you to take a look at one of our previous YouTube lives, which was hosted by my colleague Clayton which goes into a bit more detail in terms of the goalposts and the targets that we need to reach in order to achieve zero carbon. So let's move on to the design process of working with WikiHouse. So as I mentioned, anybody is free to access our block library through our website. And I'm going to show you live how to do that on, uh, 
or as part of the demonstration. We have two main block series that we offer, which is the 200 series and the 250 series. The main difference is the thickness, the depth of those blocks. So they offer different thermal performances because there's a slimmer or thicker amount of insulation inside of those. And also slightly different structural spans, which you can see in this image here. Um, the maximum span with the 250 series would be five and a half meters, just under 5.4, and then uh, 4.2 meters with the 200 series. So if we want to go beyond that, we would be looking at some potentially sort of some additional structural support. Um, so it doesn't mean that it can't be done. It just means we need to kind of project by project review that. The 200 series is designed with lighter structures in mind, like garden studios, work pods, and community facilities. While the 250 series is for more substantial structures like your typical home. We offer different design elements within the library. The main two kind of roof profiles that we offer are the pitched roof in 42 degrees and a flat roof in 10 or one degree falls. As you're kind of starting to get to grips with the WikiHouse library and modeling and, and design options, I'd really encourage you to have a look at our guides on our website. We have a really helpful design guide there that will set out essentially step by step what you need to be considering as you start to assemble your WikiHouse frame and experiment. And um, it's a really helpful uh, document. So please do head over there for uh, extra, extra information. So just to explain a little bit more about what WikiHouse is. So essentially WikiHouse is the main structural frame of your building. It is load bearing and as I say, completely timber based construction. Everything outside of that main structural frame is entirely free and open to you to specify design and detail. We've made that process as simple as possible. Um, but the nice thing is, like I say, you can really take that in your own hands and create something unique to yourself and what suits you and your design requirements. The blocks themselves are designed in a way that is practical with services in mind. So there's uh, penetrations already inbuilt into the floor blocks. We have service zones in the walls and floors. So everything can kind of be tucked away and carefully integrated with the main structural frame, which is fantastic. So the first thing to check, of course, is can you use WikiHouse for your project? Hopefully the answer is yes, but let me just explain what the potential kind of limitations or options might be. So as it's timber, we can't use it for below ground structures, but everything above ground and any kind of site conditions, be it sloping or, or flat is absolutely fine. So you're free to go ahead. Um, if you were needing any kind of below ground structure, I would just say, you would build that with a different material and you would lift your timber frame up and out the ground over the top. Um, the form options, because it's a modular based system, of course, we're looking at orthogonal plans. So um, that would be your kind of rationale in terms of how you're designing your, your floor plan and your sequence of spaces. And we offer, as I say, some uh, two different roof options, be it pitched or flat roof. So in terms of the scale of your project that you might have in mind, we're looking at a maximum of three stories at the moment using the WikiHouse system as the primary structural element. If you wanted to max out with three stories, we encourage that you brace buildings against one another, kind of like a terracing, just for some additional structural support. Um, but everything below three stories is perfectly comfortable and accommodated with the WikiHouse system. So let's look at the kind of process of design and, and what's involved in that. So as I mentioned, you can download and start to play with the blocks as you like, uh, creating structures and, and spaces. Um, it's up to you essentially to check planning and regulation compliance. That's your freedom um, with your experimentation of design. Um, we then kind of encourage using the simple block models, which I'll show you in a moment for that sort of early stage work, just because there's so much lighter and easier to handle uh, in modeling software. So they're a really great, nice way of, of experimenting and, uh, and coming up with ideas. 
then once you're kind of happy, you, you know, you've got your planning in place or you, you've figured out if you need planning in the first place. It's at that stage I'd recommend going into a really detailed kind of technical stage of chassis modeling, which is entirely up to you if you have appetite to do that. If you don't, we're happy to do it for you. Um, but the detailed blocks are all online and accessible. So hopefully it's it's a really nice, straightforward process of changing from simple to detailed. Um, the next thing to just mention is it's highly likely you'll need a structural engineer involved in your project to just essentially check that the Wikihouse chassis is suitable for your site location, checking wind loads and um, your substructure details, that kind of thing. Um, so once you've got your detailed chassis in place, we really recommend just giving that to your structural engineer to check over and they will give their kind of um, guidance and, and thorough checks on that. So it's just a really helpful and careful way of approaching the structural detailed design stages. So as I mentioned, if at any stage when you're experimenting with WikiHouse, you feel uh, stuck or not quite clear, I would just encourage you to reach out to us. We are always here on hand and happy to talk to you. Um, we're excited by all and any WikiHouse projects, whatever the scale is. So yes, please do get in touch. We offer some consultancy services ourselves in-house, where, as I mentioned, we can do the detailed kind of um, WikiHouse chassis structural model for you, if you would like to kind of hand that to us. Um, we can also create bespoke blocks uh, for you. If there's a particular design feature that you would love but isn't available in the existing library, that's no problem at all. Um, we also offer some guidance on the actual assembly of your WikiHouse structure. So we can do some step-by-step -step guides which just show kind of assembly sequence basically. So whatever you need, be it just a bit of information, help, guidance, or some technical support, please do just get in touch. Okay, so we're on to the kind of design stage now, the design exercise for today's demonstration. So we're gonna be looking at a small structure. We're gonna be looking at a tiny home or a bothy sort of cabin. I'm going to be using the 200 series as this is a lighter scale, small scale project. And this sort of uh, house design, sort of small house design will accommodate a bedroom, bathroom, kitchen, living area. Um, and it's just a really nice kind of condensed little design exercise. And I just wanted to show that, you know, even when we're working at a small scale, there's still so much opportunity for uh, design kind of um, flair, I suppose, and finesse when we're looking at the kind of finishes and the, the fine details in design. So that's really exciting. Okie dokie, I'm going to just move now over to the WikiHouse website and let's start modeling, which is very exciting. Okay, so this is the WikiHouse main website, the holding page. This is what you'll come to when you first land on our website, wikihouse.cc. So we're going to go over here to design kits. And this will take us to the next hey, I'm back. page. Just, just to let you know, your um, screen seems to be frozen. So maybe you just need to do a little refresh. Yeah. Thank you. OK, thanks, Mel. I'll remove myself. OK, hopefully you, you can see. Hopefully it doesn't freeze every time I change window because I'm going to be changing window quite a lot. No, so, that's great. We can see that. Yeah. Please just shout if it freezes again. Okay. So here we are again. So we have the two series. We can see on the little um, buttons here on the left, 200 and 250. And as I mentioned, today we're going to be working with 200 series. We have the simple blocks and the detailed blocks. So as I said, we're going to start with the simple blocks just while we're kind of experimenting and playing around with our concept design. Just going to click that link and it will download straight away, which is fantastic. So um, here we go. This is what it looks like, the block library, simple block library. So uh, lots of good stuff going on here. And I'm just going to quickly talk through what we're looking at. So we've got the wall blocks at this end, corner posts, windows and doors in this group. We've got ground floor and end blocks, which you'll see have a little recess within them, which is how we essentially fix the WikiHouse system 
to your foundations is via a timber rail or sole plate. So that's what that's for there. We have the upper floors here and, and, uh, and the floor blocks themselves. Then we have our roof blocks, so flat and pitched and a new secret uh, sneak peek at the blocks that we're just about to release, which is these roof light blocks and also some uh, gable end openings, which I know some people watching will be hopefully excited about. It's been something that has been asked of us a few times. So it's, it's great to finally get these uh, out in the open. And these are the gable end blocks as well. So let's have a little look. So today I am going to be working with the small wall series and I'm going to be working with the XXS floor blocks. Uh, I'll be working with therefore the corresponding XXS roof blocks and the, um, the corresponding small end gable blocks as well. So that's great. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to basically select each of these because I'm going to need all of them like so. Okay, I've got everything there. So I've got a two options there. Okay, I'm going to go with this one. Great. I'm going to copy. And then I'm going to move to my my next page, which I really hope you can see. Just shout if not. I'm going to paste. Okay, so that's my, it's very exciting. That's my block kits basically for this model and just move everything close together you can see what we're working with okay right super okie dokie so first thing to look at is going to be this element here we're going to look at the gable end and corner posts which is this block down here so i'm just going to rotate this by 90 degrees that's super. Okay. Here's my corner post. Again, just move and click into place. Easy peasy. We've got the wall gable block here at the lower end. The next size up in sequence. That's super. We've got our new, soon to be released gable end opening. Yep. And then we've got a gap. Okay, it's no problem. The, um, the blocks are available in the library for this side, but I could also just mirror them if I wanted to. Like so. And move into place. It. So I'm just clicking corner point to corner point, basically. And same with my corner post here. So incredibly quickly that I have a building front elevation. Um, I am matching the design that I showed in the slides previously. So I've already kind of had some thought about what I wanted in terms of openings and, and the, the scale of this building. But, you know, in the same way, you could just take different blocks and experiment with size and, and layout as you go. Totally welcome to do it either way. Um, so that's kind of the, the super fast version of, of that. Uh, I'll keep going. So we've got the floor block here, which I'll now move into place. Rotate 90 degrees and move it over. That's it. I'm going to take our wall blocks now. I'll talk a little bit in more detail about how to know which way around these go in a second. Like so. Just going to rotate. I can't quite get a corner point and sketch up. There we are. And click into corner point. There we are. Same thing again. So I'm just going to copy this block to this side. SketchUp's mirror tool done and move it into place. 
So straight away, there we go. That's given me my side elevation walls. Now I can move my roof block into place, which is over here. Need to rotate everything. I've missed off my uh, my verge block here, so I just need to add that in. So I'm just going to take a moment to explain how we know which way round blocks go, because as I'm doing it, it's obviously I work with these blocks every day, so it's second nature to me. But of course, the first time you come to use them, you might be thinking, OK, which way around does this go? So as I mentioned about the kind of surface cavity that's built in, you'll see inside here we have these ribs, these fins. This is basically what is setting out that surface zone. So wherever you have these tabs, that goes on the inside, basically. So really nice and straightforward. And I would also just encourage when you are working with the blocks, just to have a little look at almost like a jigsaw piece. Just make sure that things are kind of snapping together, that you have any teeth joins or, you know, uh, are, are kind of aligning with one another. OK, super. So I need to mirror this, copy it over. follows okay right that's our sort of our initial frame just hopefully you can see how fast that was to do it's super fun to to play with um so yes yeah, so it's very satisfying just going to check if there's any mistakes so okay so straight away i can see not a big deal but i just haven't quite snapped it in the right place so move that over there we are so that's just the kind of process of always just checking is, your, is everything in line. Uh, you can also, of course, measure the blocks because they are uh, super accurate. So your end blocks will be just under 300 and your um, your wall block to be 600. Right. So uh, in here, we can see in the roof pieces, you can see this sort of hole here at the moment. So this is our latest uh, update that we've just been working on to uh, basically create housing for a ridge beam um, because it's likely that uh, it will be needed for um, most, if not all, pit roof structures, really. So we've created a kind of a standardized housing there for that. And um, uh, if it needs to be increased, for example, if you had a larger span and a bigger uh, ridge beam element, then you'd be free to, you know, increase that housing and, and, um, and do that detail yourself. Or as I've mentioned, you can just get in touch with us and we can do that update for you. So that's the uh, that's in essence the simple block design experiment, which is really fun to do. If you, for example, felt like okay, this opening or something within the standard uh, library wasn't quite suiting your project requirements, the nice thing about the simple blocks, they're really easy to kind of edit. So I could bring that cell height up by you know point three if I wanted to. This bit in here is my pixel piece. Bring that up by the same. This is my insulation sitting inside the blocks, what it's representing there. Bring that up. Bring that up. Like so. There we are. So you get so much sort of flexibility and freedom there, uh, which is really, really exciting and super helpful. Okay, so let's look at moving on to detailed design from here. Okay, so I'm just going to get my uh, web page open again. Give me a second. Okay, so back to the same uh, website page that we were on before, and here we can see detailed again. So it would be SketchUp Detailed Design Kit. Let's have a look. Just bear with me while it opens. Okay, super. So now we're looking at the detailed uh, block library design kit. So you'll see it's super uh, similar to the simple one, but if we look a little closer, you see a lot more geometry going on here. So this is the actual uh, blocks that the cutting files are generated from. Um, so these will match exactly with what you have on site. Uh, two things that are here that were not in the simple 
library are the bow tie connectors up here, which is what clips your blocks together, and your lintels, which go over your openings. Any opening that you make in the main structural frame will, uh, will need a lintel to go over the top. Um, so that's it. So it'll be super familiar and it's a really nice sort of design sequence, I think, to go from concept to detailed design because you'll already know which blocks you're working with and how many bespoke blocks you need if you needed any at all. Uh, so it would be a simple and straightforward um, kind of uh, process to, to move to the next stage. So let's have a look at a detailed structural chassis. Okay, bring it over. Let's have a look here. So this is uh, side by side, the simple model and the detailed model here. So um, you can see everything is in alignment. Everything is the same. Just as I mentioned, we actually have the kind of the, the detailed design of the blocks in this model. So here are my bow tie connectors. So when I'm creating a detailed chassis, it's, a, it's an exercise, a little bit of patience, but I would um, I would be we are, putting all of my bow tie connectors into that um, main frame. So we'd have a standard bow tie in there, and then we would have, let's have a look inside here. We would have a slightly larger one that goes over here, which you'll see in the block kit. We have our corner connectors there. And then we have our half ties, which go just here, butting up against any openings or uh, corner posts that you might have. So, um, so that's that part. And then here's our lintel, which again, just slots inside, which you'd be able to see inside of here, literally housed inside of your opening there and it all slots together like a jigsaw, which is fantastic. Okay, so that's all of that. And then um, I'm just going to have a little look at a kind of finished model just to round up essentially. And I'm sorry if that was too fast and just paying any questions through anyone that is currently modeling that has any questions, please do send questions through or anything about the WikiHow system in general and we'll answer those next. So just coming back here. So this is kind of what it might look like when we are finishing cladding and kind of going to the next stage of design. And um, yeah, that's that's it really. That's the whole process. So really nice and straightforward. Uh, I'll just come back to my slides a moment. Okay. So you can see, obviously, working with the standard block library, there's so much room for experimentation. This is just a, a diagram here that different kind of forms, sizes, and scales of project that we created using the standard block library. So lots of room for experimentation. And I just would love to encourage everybody to, anyone that's interested to download those blocks and, and get, get, to, get trying them out. So I'd love to invite my colleagues back to the conversation, uh, Gabriella, our engineering lead, and Clayton, who's product lead, if that's okay. Thanks Thank so you. much, Amber. I think Gabriel's on his way. Uh, but no in the problem. meantime, we've got Clayton here as well. Um, and we have some questions, so I'm just going to start showing them on the screen. So Erwin is asking if the blocks are symmetrical. In the design, you use the mirror tool but can you also rotate the pieces 180 degrees or does that cause other issues, he asks. Yeah, that's, that's fine for the standard wall blocks and probably for the columns, you can, you can go over that and the floor blocks because they're all symmetrical, but the gable-in walls are a bit different. Um, you can mirror them like Amber's done for the simple models, but when you're working with the detail models, you just have to be a bit more careful because each of those detail blocks are unique. Um, because the inside face is slightly different from the out, from the outside face. Um, if you can zoom in on that, Amber. Um, yeah. And it just means that you can't just sort of flip them around in reality um, if you try to put the pieces together um, and actually build up the block out of, out of plywood. Um, you're, you're going to have to, rec to recut a, a different piece um, for the left and right side. 
So that's just something to be aware of. So if you are, if you are playing around the simple models, that's fine. But just make sure that you're matching it with the right um, uh, block name and reference and cutting files if you are getting it manufactured. That's great. Thanks, Clayton. I think that's a question for you here. Um, uh, do you see it feasible to use a laser cutter for OSB 18 millimeters or a smaller scale CNC using tiling feature? I'm not familiar with tiling features, um, so I can't really comment on that. Um, it, it, it's, it may work. Um, the laser cutter should be fine. There have been projects in the past that have used an industrial laser. Um, it's a little bit messier. Um, because you need to sort of clean or sand the edges a bit if you want a nice finish. But um, it, it, it does work fine. Um, I would say that uh, a CNC is probably a cheaper option. But um, yeah, if you have access to an industrial laser, um, uh, yeah, feel free to use that. One thing you might have to check is just the, the tolerances and fit, because they're, the tolerances that are on the cutting files have been specified for the CNC machine. Whereas a laser, I believe, cuts on the line rather than outside the line. So it might um, make the parts a little bit looser. At least that's been experienced at a small scale. So just check that. Um, it might be something you can change in the settings. Thanks. Um, that's brilliant. I have a question um, from Carlos, who is asking about the comms. And now um, the comms were a feature of Skylark when we launched it last year, but since then we've made some changes to the system. So do you want to tell us a little bit more about what's changed, Clayton, just a little bit of background to why we are here now with our comms? Yeah, I'll summarize it really quickly. Um, I, I would suggest that if you're interested in terms of the, the deeper reason why, you might go back to some of our previous videos on the channel. Um, there's a, a, a about Skylark 0.2 launch and also one about lessons from Peak Barnes. Um, those are worth a watch because they go into a bit more detail about what we learned from some of the previous builds we did with the 0.1 version, which included the combs, and why we why we um, designed them out for the 0.2 version, which is what you're looking at now. Um, basically, we are now using bow ties to join the, um, the vertical elements, so join the floors to the walls to the roof, instead of using combs and pegs. Um, we find the bow ties are really easy to install, they're much more effective, and the combs were uh, quite awkward to deal with um, and also got in the way of insulation and that kind of thing. So, um, yeah, bow ties made life a lot easier. So, uh, we've gone with that for the vertical connections as well. Um, but if you're interested in the sort of structural details and yeah, some of the other stuff, I'd definitely have a look at the, the previous videos. That's great. Yeah, I think that's from April or March this year. You can see them in the channel if you're interested in knowing a bit more about that. Um, Amber, I think I've got a question for you. Um, can you give us a quick explanation of how the wiki house must be connected to the foundation? I think you briefly went over it, but maybe you can just go back to that bit. Yeah, definitely. So let's have a look underneath. So I mentioned, didn't I, this recess within the ground floor blocks. That's a really important thing to just check when you're in the block library as that is the difference between ground and first floor is there's this recess space inside. And what that means is if I just quickly model an example. So, uh, where am I? right. So, uh, okay. So we could have a, uh, one. Let's see. Not quite. Bear with me. We're basically going to have a timber sole plate inside here. So let me just create something. Okay. The dimensions are not right there. I'm pretty high. Okay. Bring that down. Okay. Right. So our timber sole plate. Is going to go inside here. Okay, perfect. And that is going to be like a rail that is going to wrap all the way around. Uh, that's it, perfectly. So uh, that timber sole plate is going to be supported by a foundation or a substructure of your choosing. It's totally up to you, and it is something that you should be talking to a structural engineer or some sort of person with, with that kind of expertise for your for your area to, to specify because you want to be checking ground conditions you want to be checking uh, structural load that kind of a thing 
So the nice thing is it's a, it could be a standard and typical substructure um, that will um, work for your local area. You're putting your timber rail over the top of that, and then you're fixing your wiki house into the timber rail. Um, so there's nothing particularly complicated about it, which is nice. The thing to always just mention, as I briefly touched on, because it's a timber construction system, I said we couldn't use it for basements. Um, so the thing to just elaborate a little more on there is this timber cannot be sitting inside the ground. It needs to be lifted up and out of the ground. So just make sure whatever your substructure is and your ground levels are, that you're 150 mil clear of your um, surrounding ground level. And then you're sitting your wiki house structure on top there. So uh, hopefully that answers the question. That's great. Thank you. Yeah, I think that, that answers the question that, um, that Carlos had. Um, I have another one from Erwin, so I'm just going to put it on the screen here. Do you have an example of an irregular plan, either a plan with a 90 degree angle or two parallel spans? It seems like those would require custom end blocks, he asks. I just need a moment to really understand that. So 90 degree angle, two parallel spans. Hmm. I'm not sure I fully understand. All right, well, uh, perhaps, perhaps sure it was Erwin talking about can... like L, L shaped plans. Yeah, that's all I can think. Yeah. We've got, um, yeah, so we have experimented on the on a sort of prototype with end to end spans. Um, so essentially joining two floor beams um, end to end. Um, over a sort of central wall or column, um, it, which which is um, it is doable, but we need to develop a sort of a whole library of blocks to to make that part of the standard kit. Um, at the moment, the, the easy way to do that is to um, is to basically have two buildings rotated ninety degrees from each other, yeah, and um, and have openings in between the two. I'd say that's probably the easiest way. Have a sort of open end wall, and and join them uh, like that. Yeah. Um, is a, is a sort of quick hack way of achieving that, um, but if you if you have something more actually complex in mind, then um, yeah, yeah, you could definitely work with us and get in touch, and we can have a look at um, uh, ways we can try and resolve that. That's brilliant. Yeah, he meant an L shape. He just clarified, so that's great. Yeah. Um, also, if you have um, just to remind you that there are people. Uh, building wiki house all over the world um, and you can contact them in our community so other people might be having the same questions as you who want to um, just check what others are up to when designing with the system. Um, Lachlan, hello from New Zealand. We've got a question here. When attaching an internal finish to a wiki house cassette, do you screw nail directly into the end grain of the wall cassette connection point? Does that have any issues with blowout of the ply layers? Yes. Yeah, um, I can take that. Um, Amber, did you, did you have something you want to say? I'll let you address it, Clayton, because I have two options. The, the answer is you, well, okay, I'm talking now. I've just taken over, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, the option is exactly as you say, Lachlan, about fixing directly into um, the end grain. That is uh, a nice, let me just model. That is a nice uh, way of dealing with it. I think you just have to be careful about potentially what, what fixing you're using there. Um, I, I'd have to double check what the exact name of, of, um, of, of fixing is, but that would be my kind of my first advice. Uh, if you needed, this is the kind of thinking that I have, if you needed more flexibility for any reason in terms of where to position your fixings for your internal finish, then you might be looking at a, a batten layer again on the inside. But, you know, the, the, the anticipation with the ribs is that they would give you regular enough fixing points to be able to put any finished material um, uh, uh, all along the inside of your chassis. Is that right? Is, is any yeah, of my colleagues? We, yeah. We, we, from experience, it hasn't been so much about sort of blowing out the timber, but uh, the, the sort of separation of the plywood layers or anything like that. It's been more just making sure there's enough sort of bite in the in the screws that are going to the end grain. Um, so it depends on the types of screws you're using. The I think the standard sort of really cheap plasterboard screws aren't great. Um, they uh, I think something more like a like a, a tech screw um, 
with a better thread on it would be would be a better suggestion, um, which which definitely do grip quite nice, nicely to end grain, um, and because it's not serving a structural purpose, uh, that's fine. It's it's literally just for the yeah, for the sort of uh, finished layer. Amazing, thanks. Uh, we have a question uh, from LinkedIn, actually, from Adrian. I'm just going to put it in there. Are moisture yeah. barriers required between the foundation and flow blocks? What longevity is assumed for maintaining structural rigidity in temperate climates? So I don't know where he's joining us from, but who's going to take that question? I'll take the first part. Um, so, yes, moisture barrier would be required between your foundation and your flow blocks. And the way to really think about WikiHouse, and I think this is a great thing is like a traditional timber frame. It's not behaving in any kind of different uh, way to, to a traditional timber frame would work. So you will want to have your DPC layer and you'll want to lap that up and over your substructure. And then you'll want to sit your timber frame over the top of that DPC layer. Then you'll have your external breather membrane wrapped down and over that and just make sure that you have a, a good overlap um, to kind of have that continuous to proofing layer all the way around. Um, I think that hopefully answers that question. Um, longevity for maintaining structural rigidity in temperate climates. Um, this is an interesting question. It's a question I was asked recently as well, actually, which is, uh, I suppose, an experiment in how does OSB or PLY perform in different, um, yeah, different parts of the world? Yeah, perhaps I can quickly comment on that. I think it comes down to the material that you're using. Um, to my um, understanding and experience, every time you buy uh, um, some sort of timber, it comes with a declaration of performance if you're using it in Europe or the UK. or um, And normally, they should guarantee your panel for X number of years. So I believe, could be wrong, but if I remember correctly, the last plywood that we used was guaranteed for 60 years. So that the sort of... Um, time spent that is guaranteed on paper. Obviously, the, the discussion here to open is, is, is about risk, right? So they, they may need to write a number um, that they can provide insurance for. So 60 years seems, seems to be a reasonable one, but um, we believe that if you have adequate maintenance, there's nothing nothing prohibits you to go even, even longer than that time spent. So um, yeah. That's great. Thank you, Gabri. Um, we have another question. Um, sometimes we find material thicker or thinner than the 18 millimeters, plus or five, plus or minus 0.5 millimeters. Will this affect the general assembly, asks Carlos. I don't know where in the world you are, Carlos. Um, maybe let us know in the comments. Uh, who wants to take the answer, that question? <laughs> um. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it will to some extent. It depends how much um, over it is. We have allowed tolerance for about up to not uh, half a millimeter um, in the cutting files, um, but obviously, if, if you're at the upper limit of that, it will be a sort of tighter fit. Um, what you can do is uh, make some adjustments on your CNC machine, or you can make adjustments on the cutting files themselves um, if you know what sort of range your plywood is going to be in. I, um, and you can allow for greater tolerance than, than there is currently. So currently, yeah, there's a, there's a half mil tolerance on all the all the pieces. Um, uh, that's um, both the sort of slots and the outer profiles of each of the parts. Um, you can find some of the details in the manufacturing guide if you're interested, um, which sort of explains this um, a bit more clearly. But yeah, uh, it's always a good idea to to measure the, the batch of material you've got first. And just to check whether that's sort of within the normal range and if it's outside of that to make some changes to the phone calls. Amazing, thanks. Uh, we have one more question. Oh, Carlos is in Ecuador. Hello. We've got people from all over the world joining us. That's brilliant. Um, Jeff is asking uh, if there has been any testing for air infiltration. There, there has been some, um, but we'd love to do more. Um, we, we're, yeah, looking for... Uh, recent projects where we can do, uh, get some good recent data from with Skylark. Uh, previously with Wren, we were getting around sort of two air changes per hour, two and three, um, and that was on a sort of, uh, yeah, sort of general contractor project. Um, I would, yeah, if anyone has built a recent Skylark project and um, has some 
recent air tightness reports have been great. A lot of it comes down to making sure that you are, you know, whoever's building it is doing their, their vapor barrier um, uh, as precisely as possible and being quite meticulous with, uh, with taping and sealing um, joints between the, between the vapor barrier um, and any surface penetrations um, and, uh, and just being yeah, generally quite sort of on it. Um, the but uh, but yeah, but using a VCL is, is is a standard approach to try and get a good air tightness. So wouldn't you can't rely just on the um, the internal finishes or even on the uh, on the structure itself to get um, as an airtight barrier. So yeah, like any other type of frame, it's making sure that you it's detailed and done correctly outside. That's great, thank you. Uh, Debbie has a question about the program you've been using, Amber. So I know you're in SketchUp, but we do use other programs as well. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yes, I'm very sorry I didn't say I was working in SketchUp. This is exactly what it is. I'm using the desktop version of SketchUp here. And I think the latest um, versions of SketchUp, SketchUp sorry, are also like a web br browser version. So there's different ways of accessing it. It's totally free. And, um, and a nice sort of straightforward uh, piece of software to, to, to use. We also, so let me just flick back to the website one second. So uh, you'll see here on the um, block library section of the website here that we have different uh, types of downloads and they're basically for different software um, platforms. So we offer SketchUp, Rhino, AutoCAD, Blender, and then an IFC if there's um, uh, somebody using something outside of those four, basically. Um, so lots of option there for both free software and sort of paid um, paid subscription-based software. So um, hopefully that's that covers that. Yep, brilliant, thanks. Uh, a question from Germany, from Friedrich, um, who is asking, can you lift and move the whole house in assembled conditions? That's a design challenge we had recently on a project, actually. So that's quite fresh in our minds uh, as a as a, as an option. So I think I'll pass to Gabri if that's okay. I think you'd be better explaining. Yeah, maybe I can quickly comment on that. Um, well, the first thing for me will be, what is the size of the house? Like, are we talking about a single story or a two story building? Probably will be a different um, a different game. However. Um, the idea we as amber was mentioning we um we had this challenge on a project on a single story house recently and one of the solutions we were coming up with was a sort of a steel cage a steel frame that is lifting the wiki house from the foundations essentially um if you if you think about that well, most of the load kind of goes into the foundation so the the lifting points are quite critical to make sure you don't you, um, essentially, you don't lift the blocks themselves. We need to lift the whole thing. So um, I believe that was a single-story structure. Um, a two-story structure probably will be a different game. Mm -hmm. um, but um, so, yeah, I think we'll probably need to see the project to actually yeah. make sure the anchor point are the correct ones for yeah, the house not to be damaged. Amazing. I think that's all the questions we have for now, Amber. So I'm going to hand over to you Thank again. Thank you. Thanks so much. Okay, that's great. Um, so I guess just to kind of round up today, if anything pops into your mind following this kind of conversation and this demonstration, then don't think that the conversation with us is finished because it's absolutely not. So please do reach out and get in touch. Uh, you could either email us and Mel's kindly put the... Uh, email link into the description box of this video. Uh, we also have a feedback link on our website, which you're welcome to submit any kind of suggestions or ideas you have for the WikiHouse system, because we're always evolving and always growing. Um, and we also have the community forum, which is an amazing place to kind of meet other uh, WikiHouse enthusiasts, um, experts, specialists, etc. So yeah, please do go ahead. I think probably the, the final thing to say is to any design uh, professionals watching, if you're interested in getting more to grips with WikiHouse, um, perhaps even uh, joining our providers list, which is a kind of a network of uh, design experts and um, 
manufacturers and installers and structural engineers uh, also please do reach out we'd love to talk to you um, and that's everything so thanks from me thank and you so much Amber. thank you to everybody um, who's joined us today um, and yes uh, we'll add the links uh, just below the video where if you have any questions please reach out via the community or via the email address and we'll be back at the end of November uh, at the end of October with our next um, live event so thank you so much and I'll see you soon. Bye.